Now that we've got a good portion of our functionality in place on our page, it's time to move on to the styling portion of the of the project, the CSS. Now, just like I kind of keep a con pretty consistent workflow with every project from starting with the HTML, which you know you have to start, then moving on to some of the core functionality and you know finally moving on to the styling part of it, I kind of keep that same system for my CSS not exactly the same like that but but you kinda try to keep a a structured workflow for yourself so it just in a way you know every step of the way you wanna stay organized that something mind you I'm not a very organized person in my personal life I try to be I'm a wannabe organized person and if you know if you're not naturally organized um, really you should try very hard when you're uh, in web design, when you're designing and coding and all that because honestly most of your problems come from mysterious things happening probably because you started screwing around with too many options and too many codes and you kinda took a tangent off somewhere and you lost yourself in what you were doing but it's okay you know with more time you you refine the process obviously so here's my document and I'm gonna start so far well look, well let's look at what we have so far we have two two classes over here I have the even row class and I have the collapse class actually if I if I do this live view over here in Dreamweaver, it'll okay. There we go. It'll render what I'm doing. So, so we see that you know the even rows is just it's every other row over here is getting a that different color background, and obviously collapsed is is turning this thing red. So, what I want to do now is, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is just actually title my my document start off with some comments and uh, titling it here I'm just gonna call it um, I don't know let me just call it web design to dictionary list style sheet uh, let's see and I'll make sure I put my name in there and the year pretty simple um, some people tell you to put more I mean honestly there's not going to be like if you were publishing something for other people to use you could put some contact information you could probably put um, you know a brief on what it does and the style sheet and what it does and some of that stuff but we're not we're not going that far deep with it um, we're just gonna put this more for ourselves so that someone ever looks at it so before I start with anything any of my own personal code I want to apply a CSS reset to this document and CSS reset basically um, some of the issues with different browsers is they have different defaults like different margins and paddings for things and and you know there's subtle differences that could kinda of drive you nuts when you're designing because your your actual look may not be fully consistent throughout all the browsers so I'm gonna start off with a CSS reset now there's a lot of them out there um, one that I've used in my in some other videos I have is the Yahoo user interface CSS reset so I like that one but I wanna show you something different I'm gonna look up um, the Eric Meyer CSS reset it's a little more it's Eric Meyer CSS reset and if you look you'll likely find it right there on Meyer web and he's got a little something written here if you don't know who he is is his website uh, you'll find it right there definitely there's a lot of good stuff on there so if, if you don't know about it this is uh, a, a great place to explore a lot of CSS related stuff he's very popular um, very popular CSS guy specifically and and web author and, and all that good stuff um, so let me take his reset over here I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna plug it right into my page uh, right now um, let's see what I'll do too is I'll make sure that I reference that it's uh, what it is I could leave that version in there because you never know if it changes I may want to change it and it's good for me I'll put 
Eric Meyer CSS reset. Then I could even put the website over there, and there we go. And now that's going to change my document a bit. Let's see. So here's what my document looks like before the reset, and okay, here's what it looks like after the reset. Um, some interesting things. We just take a peek at, at what it does. I mean, if you look at it, makes we got some. It zeroes out some borders, padding, and outline for um, all of these elements here obviously it also does that vertical line baseline a uh, transparent background the font size it sets to a hundred um, uh, this is something that I've done that I do all the time for my font sizing is you put the font size to a hundred percent for the body this is actually something for um, I think Internet Explorer 7 has a problem when you people want to resize fonts. Like I'm often like if I went to this website and I'm looking at it and the text is this small, I like to bring up my font size manually. I do it actually. Uh, I'm doing it with the shortcut keys, but I'm using zo the zoom in and zoom out function that all browsers have. So you know, I know sometimes designers like to design that really small text because, you know, it looks good, but I guess it looks cool, but it kind of interferes with the readability for me because I don't, I'm not really, I don't have poor, uh, poor sight on, on things that are close. I just don't like having to read those small, that small text. So I usually bring it up for myself so I could kind of lean back and read it. Um, and oh, what happens is is that there's a rendering bug in in Internet Explorer 7, so that's why you'll uh, people set it to the font size to 100. I mean, I think if you just go I E, let's see, font font rendering, and then we'll do the font size 100%. I'm sure if I Google this, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you kind of Google. So like some kind of search query like this and you know read around you could certainly find more information on on the font rendering problem with IE7 and uh, and I believe 8 as well so that's something worth uh, looking into um, alright so so far what we've done is just apply the Eric Myers CSS reset it set up a lot of stuff and maybe the next thing that we want to do is now start working on our typography for the site.